Can you can apples without sugar? Today I'm going to show you how. G'day there, I'm Dana from Piwakoka Valley Homestead and my mother has very kindly gifted me with a whole bunch of cooking apples. These are a pie apple that holds its shape when it cooks um, but they're not very delicious to just eat. So I'm going to can a bunch of those um, so that we can use them to make apple, apple crumble, also known as apple crisp or apple shortcake or maybe even apple pie later on. We don't eat a great deal of sugar around here and um, because of that we want to be able to can these without sugar in them. They're quite a nice tart apple uh, but they've got enough sweetness in them that we don't need to be adding sugar while we can them. Now if you are canning without sugar just be aware that the fruit probably won't look quite as beautiful or amazing later on. The sugar, whilst it adds a sweetness to the preserving, it doesn't actually do much of the preserving itself. It does help keep the colour and help keep the shape, I guess, sort of. It does add to sort of the firmness of the fruit, but it doesn't add to how long it will actually preserve for. So preserved apples that are done without sugar may not look quite as beautiful as the ones that are canned with sugar but they will still taste like apples and they will last just as long. Now I am going to be water bath canning these. Fruit has enough sugar in it and enough acid in it, most most fruit has enough sugar and acid in it that it's perfectly safe to water bath can them. So I am actually, you can see behind me I've got my, that's my Presto pressure canner that I've actually got over there but I'm going to use it as a water bath. If you've got a normal water bathing pot you can totally use that. If you've got a rack that will fit into one of your existing stock pots you can use that instead. Don't try and use a ceramic plate on the bottom of a normal pot as a rack. Um, I can guarantee you it will crack and explode. I've tried that myself. What you need is a wire rack that can go on the bottom. Uh, this one has, it looks like a pie. Uh, like a pizza tray. It's kind of metal and flat with holes in it, but it's also got some wee divots on the bottom that keep it up off the ground. I'm not going to stick my hand in there to show you though, because I've got that on boiling. So um, yeah. Anyway, you'll need something because the glass, if it touches the bottom of your pot, it will explode and crack and you'll lose everything. So there we have it. So I'm going to be water bathing in my pre pressure canner. So all you really need is a pot with a lid that's tall enough that you can fit your jars in it with a rack underneath and an inch of water on the top. So you are looking at a fairly tall pot to be able to put those in. Once I have my fruit all cut up and ready to go, I am also going to be making some apple scrap vinegar. So I will uh, make a separate video on that and you'll be able to check that out. Now one of the first things you'll need to do is get some jars. The jars you will need these ones are quart jars or a litre sized. I have a range of different brands of them, but as long as you've got a jar with a lid that fits them. So these are the rings and then some seals. So all my jars take the same size seal, but some of them take the silver lids and some of them take the green lids. They're ever so slightly different. So I've got enough rings for each of those and enough seals for each of those. And we are going to hot pack these apples. You can cold pack them. But the problem with cold packing fruit is that they do tend to deflate as soon as they get hot. So when you are choosing your jars, um, these are a quart or a litre size jars. You can make them in the half or the pint size jar. Um, it just depends what you're planning on making with them. Usually if we're making something with fruit, we use a whole litre. Um, so we're going to do them in big jars. You need to check the bottoms and around the rims to make sure there's no cracks or chips. If there's a chip in the top, they probably won't seal. And if there's cracks in the, and if there's cracks in the bottom like this one has, they will probably explode when you heat them up. So I have two here that have tiny little cracks in the bottom. They aren't normal canning bottles. I was given them, um, I think... They're more decorative rather than anything else and I have obviously heated them at some point and the bottoms of them have cracked. So I'm going to be using these two for making my apple cider vinegar later. 
So once you've chosen your jars and you've got some seals and some bands that fit them, get yourself a tray and sit them in there. Now I'm just guessing how many apples just by sight, how many apples I've got and then I've got enough jars plus a spare one just in case. So it is just a bit of a guess. So these are all clean and dry and I'm going to place these into, I've got my oven set currently at 100 degrees Celsius which is 200 degrees Fahrenheit and I'm going to place these in there for about 10 to 15 minutes while I'm getting these apples ready to can up. Now you'll also have to check with the instructions with your seals. These seals do not need preheated, some seals do. So to do that you just need to put them in a small pot um, and pour boiling water over them and um, leave them to heat up. All right, in this pot here, my one handled pot, I have half filled it with water and I have just added a teaspoon of citric acid. You could also use a couple of tablespoons of lemon juice in the water and that will work too. The aim is to just acidify the water slightly so that when we're putting our cut fruit in there, they're not going brown. So the aim is to try and preserve the color as best we can. And we're gonna need a little bit of the citric acid later on. You can can the apples totally without it, but as I said before, the sugar does help preserve the color of the fruit and because we're not doing the sugar I'm going to add a little bit of citric acid um, and that will help stop them going brown. The other thing we're going to need is a bowl to put your scraps in so we can keep those for making the apple cider vinegar later and I also have this fancy little contraption here it's an apple peeling corer they are pretty cheap for what you can get I'll link to one from Amazon down below this one was not an expensive gadget, but they're really helpful. If you're doing lots of apples, these are the way to go. If you're doing lots of apples for apple sores, or if you're doing them for children, like, you know, if you're feeding mush to your babies, for apples and pears, I find this really, really great. It slices it, it cores it, and it peels it all in one easy motion. The only thing I've found is that because we have this very rustic countertop, that the suction thing doesn't work very well on it. I struggle to find somewhere flat enough to suction it on. So I might bring in a helper at some point to help me do some of these apples because it's easier if someone holds this down to the bench while the other one spins it around. Apple varieties come in a range of different types. So obviously there are cider apples that are better for making cider. There are pie apples that are better for making pie. There are cooking apples that are better for making apple sauce. They cook down, they become really light and fluffy. And then of course there are dessert apples or eating apples. So if you are planning on canning them, ideally you would have yourself some pie apples. So they are the ones, they do tend to be more tart, they do tend to be slightly more dry, and they generally will hold their shape when you cook them. So that's what we're aiming for here. Now, as you can see, I have run this apple through the apple corer and it's discovered a little blemish on there. So I'll cut that off. But what it does is cuts them, whoops, it broke, cuts them into this little concertina. So you can then run a knife down through them and it will very quickly cut them all in half. I'm just going to cut that wee blemish off there. run the knife down through them and suddenly I have these beautiful little apple slices. So I'm going to throw those into my pot of acidic water. So I will zoom you in closer and you can see how this fancy gadget works. You can of course just peel them by hand um, or you and core them by hand and slice them by hand but if you have one of these it does make it so much faster. And there's this fancy little lever on the back here that you can push and it makes pulling it back really quick. So you just pop your apple on. can just pull your cut piece off the end there 
cut it in half and you've got all your slices ready to go. I think my peace and quiet without children has ended. The toddler's about to come in and help. It's an apple. Yeah, it's an apple. Now, ideally, um, you won't wash these too hard because we're going to be using the skins to try and get the ferment for the apple cider vinegar going. So you don't want to be scrubbing all the natural yeasts off the outside. Okay. Um, but I have given them a quick wipe down. Right, bud, you ready? Go. Nope, the other way. Wow, that's so sick. Right, after much child wrangling, some bribery chocolate, and some screen time, I have managed to do all of these apples. We now have got a pot full of. Uh, sliced apples ready to go over to heat up. I have a whole lot of peels and cores ready to make vinegar. And I have a pot of very hot water and a crazy toddler running through the kitchen. So the next step, do you like my penny? This used to be my grandma's. Um, my apron. My grandma made it. Anyway, uh, the next step is I'm going to put this big pot of apples on, on high and just bring it to a quick simmer. Now, the reason I am heating these apples up is that apples get softer, obviously, when they're hot, but they also release a bit of juice. So if you were to cold pack your apples, which you can do, but by the time you cold pack them all the way to the top, by the time you cook them, uh, water bath them they will have shrunk down and you'll end up with a big gap at the bottom of just water or juice so i prefer to hot pack them it is an extra step but i think you get more fruit in a jar and ultimately a better product so it is worth doing but it does take that little bit longer and one extra pot now i just want to talk about the difference with water bathing them and with pressure canning them because apples do naturally contain some acid and some sugar, you can safely water bath them. So you would need to water bath uh, the pint, uh, the quart sized jars for 30 minutes and the pint sized jars or half a litre for 20 minutes. And if you are planning on pressure canning them, which you can do, you'll find that they end up much, much more cooked if you pressure can them so that you do risk them just turning into mush. Pressure canning on paper does sound faster because you only need to pressure can them for eight minutes instead of 20 to 30 minutes. Um, but I have found that by the time you get your pressure canner up to pressure that you're pretty close to your 20 minutes anyway because you've got to put the lid on, let it vent for 10 minutes and then put the pressure gauge on, get it up to pressure uh, with apples, if you are under 300 meters, you can uh, elevation or a thousand feet, you can uh, do them at five pounds of pressure just for eight minutes. But if you are above that level, so above a thousand feet or above 300 meters, you do need to do them all the way up at the 10 pounds of pressure level. Uh, for the eight minutes so by that stage they are going to be pretty mushy so for these apples I am planning on water bathing them even though I am actually using my pressure canner pot I just won't be putting the rocker on the top so it won't be building any pressure all right now my apples have been just been brought up to a simmer and I'm going to bring them over and get the hot jars out now the other things that are going to be helpful for this process are a slotted spoon a uh, canning, what are they called? Not a sieve, funnel, and a ladle for getting the hot liquid out. Now my apples were not completely submerged under the water, so the ones in the very top have gone a little brown, but that's okay. Now I'll see if I can tip you so you can see what we're doing. Whoop, don't fall down. 
using the slotted spoon I'm just going to be scooping out as many apples as we can fit in a jar you want to put as many apples in your jar as you can because they will continue to sort of settle down and shrink a little over the canning process and then you want your fruit to finish an inch from the top so for me that's about the height of the rims of my jars to help preserve as much of the apple flavour as possible, I'm going to use the same liquid that we cooked them in as the canning liquid. Just be careful, it is very hot. And because we've packed them in quite tightly, they're going to need a little bit of help releasing that air from around the sides. So all you need to do is run a knife around in a few spots, not all the way around, to let the air bubbles up. Uh, about half a teaspoon of citric acid to each jar will help preserve the colour of the apples as well. This is an optional extra and you don't have to do it though. Your leftover liquid in your pot can be quite easily added to any ferments that you've got going making apple cider vinegar. Just let it cool down before you add it because the heat can kill the yeast and the bacteria which is the opposite of what you're trying to do. Right now, once you've got all of these up to the right level, you just need to wipe the tops of them with a rag just to make sure that they're nice and clean because you need to be able to get a nice good seal on the top of these. And then you just place your seals on the top. Just be careful these jars are quite hot so you don't want to be holding on to them and you only want to be doing them up fingertip tight anyway. But having hot jars is a good way to make sure that you're not over tightening them because you can't hold on to them. That lid doesn't want to do up on there. Now the next thing we need to do is very carefully lower these into the boiling water that I have set over in the water bath canner and then make sure that the water comes up about an inch over the tops of them. If they don't quite you can add some boiling water out of the kettle to get it high enough. Now it's really important that you're always adding hot liquid to hot jars into a hot canner and vice versa. So if you're cold packing, it goes into cold jars and into cold water in your canner. The main reason that jars will crack is the shock of going from one temperature to the other too quickly. Now because I was expecting there to be five jars in there, not three, I do need to add some extra water. All right, you can see over here, oh, if we don't get you covered in steam, um, these have all got some water over the top of them. And once they come up to a boil, I'm going to stick the lid on them and boil them for eight minutes. And once they have finished cooking, we can simply take them out and sit them on either a wooden board or a folded towel, somewhere that it's not really, really cold. So I wouldn't lift them out and stick them straight on the top of my cast iron top of my fire uh, or onto a metal uh, cooktop, uh, bench cooktop, anything. You don't want them going from really hot to really cold. You can leave them in the water bath to cool down slightly, but you do want to get them out sooner rather than later so that they can form a really good seal as they cool down. To do this safety, safely, you're going to need a jar lifter that fits the top of your jars. Mine doesn't fit very well, but it fits well enough. It fits the mason jars really well, but ours are a New Zealand brand and I haven't managed to find one of these doofers that fit them very well. So I do have to be really careful when I'm lifting them out that I've got a really firm grip on them because I have dropped a couple back into the water. Luckily, none of them have smashed, but I have dropped them. Once the apples are nice and cool in their jars and they have formed a really good seal, you can take the screw bands off and you can label the tops of them and pop them away and your preserves covered and even though they are preserved without sugar they should be shelf stable perfectly fine for at least a year 
I hope you found this video really useful. If you have, hit the like button. Consider subscribing to our channel. We bring you videos twice a week on growing and preserving your own food and other homesteading bits and pieces. We'll see you in the next one.